Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Monti. Today we're going to talk about the important topic of mitochondria or mitochondrial function. We're hearing a lot about this. And many people learned in high school biology that mitochondria are the so-called powerhouses of the cell. But what does that mean? And why is it important? How do the mitochondria create energy? And what can you be doing to live your most energetic life? I have a top expert with us in the field, and the discussion is something you're not going to want to miss. I'm here today with Dr. Anthony Bazan, the medical director of the Marcus Institute of Integrative Health, and he's also on the faculty of our Department of Integrative Medicine and Nutritional Sciences here at Thomas Jefferson University. Dr. Bazan, welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me, as usual. A pleasure. Well, it's always great to speak with you. And I have an important topic that there's more and more attention about, and I'm getting a lot of questions about, and that is the role of mitochondria and mitochondrial function in health and longevity. Now, most of us have heard about mitochondria as the so-called powerhouses of the cell, but really beyond that, there's a lot of information out there, and I would say some misinformation. So can we just start with the basics? What are mitochondria and why are they important? So mitochondria means granule-like thread from Greek. That name was given in 1898, and powerhouse of the cell was given in 1937. Now we have to talk about ATP, adenosine triphosphate. This chemical is the flame of life, the fire of life, the poets talk about. It is actually true. We need to burn to live. We are a control burn. And so that energy, ATP, right, comes from the mitochondria. Exactly. One fun part of the conversation that we have with our patients is the question, how do you know you have the best mitochondria on the planet? And they look and say, I don't know. And all the answer is this. The answer is, you just won the Olympics. Huh. And a lot of people know your name now. How do you know that you don't have enough mitochondria? Well, you don't, you don't because you did. And then everything is in between. Right. So mitochondria are worth their weight in platinum. And I think, um one of the things that's important um, for people to be thinking about as you talk about this is that oftentimes in like a high school biology textbook, you see a cell with a nucleus, a mitochondria, but actually cells have multiple mitochondria and the amount of mitochondria and how well they function to be creating energy has a lot to do with what we're doing in our lives. We can introduce two concepts when it comes to mitochondria. Yeah. Very important concepts. One is called biogenesis. In other words, you want a lot of mitochondria. You want a lot of mitochondria density, okay? And we'll get to how you get to that later. But that's one thing, and it's called biogenesis. And it has to do with genetics, but it has a lot to do with, see, we call genetics the genotype, and then we call what you do with your life the phenotype, right? And so if you are good at taking care of your phenotype, meaning your version that you are today, that is a very good thing because you can increase your mitochondria. The other big function that happens in the world of mitochondria is called mitophagy. And that refers to the fact that the body is able to recognize defective mitochondria and take them out of circulation. So these are the two things that you wanna do. You wanna have excellent mitophagy, so when your mitochondria becomes old, it starts to malfunction, it doesn't stand in the way of, you know. The cleanup process occurs, making way for new healthy mitochondria. Exactly, and then you want as many as you possibly can, which is called biogenesis, which leads to density. So again, the more mitochondria you have, the higher is your performance level. So then I assume when we're born and when we're young, we naturally have more density of mitochondria in the cells and that cleanup process is more efficient than when we age. So how does diet affect the density of the mitochondria and also the autophagy? Diet um, with wholesome foods helps the production of energy and helps reducing inflammatory effects, helps reducing oxidative stress which means free radicals, we call it ROS, reactive oxygen species, which is how the mitochondria get hurt. Are there any specific key nutrients in the diet that are particularly helpful for mitochondria production and mitochondrial function? Raw vegetables is number one. So diet, and of course diet affects the microbiome, right. other things. Right, now what if you had a diet that ruins your microbiome? Mm. 
the ones that changes the bacteria from the ones that detox your food and create vitamins to the one that take vitamins and take them and turn them into enemy. You know, and the type of bacteria is very important because you can have pro-inflammatory bacteria. What does that mean? That they set you on fire. So you get with the wrong diet and you, and you have the anti-inflammatory bacteria that you get with the right diet. And so that's extremely important because it sets up the entire stage for the function of the body as a whole. What is the impact of that on the mitochondria specifically? So the more inflammation, the more oxidative stress, the more your mitochondria are under attack. Because the oxidative stress actually kills off the mitochondria. It ruins the mitochondria, right. And it, it makes them live less because it's almost like you are now, you've gone from living in a nice, peaceful, beautiful city, and now the city is under siege. Mm -hmm. And they're shelling the walls. Now you have fires everywhere, things are falling apart, structures are being destroyed. There are ways that mitochondria get hurt with reactive species. The number one, is lipid peroxidation. What does that mean? Somebody is taking a blowtorch to the uh, door of your car. Do you like that? No, you don't. What is the door of your car made of? Lipids. Membranes Which is are why made the of quality lipids. of our lipids is also oh, important. The quality God. of the fats that we take in is very important as well. Whatever fat you eat, you become. So those anti-inflammatory fats that build membranes, such as omega-3s, omega-9s, are really critical. That's why they call them essential fatty acids. So the next is, you know, uh, mitochondrial DNA damage. And then there's the final, you know, in another big piece is the misfolding or damage to protein. What everything happens between the inside of the outside of the cell is usually through protein channels. So you have the wall made of fat and in the wall you have all these channels that allow you to talk from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cells and those are proteins. So if you start misfolding those proteins and creating problems with them, then the messages don't come across. You take testosterone and then the receptor is a protein. It doesn't work. Then you take testosterone and the body inside of the body doesn't even know. It would be like when you, you, know, you go to grandpa and say, hey, how you doing? He goes, what? You know, what are you, what are you talking about? So, so these are all very important things that have direct relationship to the type of microbiome that you have. So diet, ensuring you have a good microbiome. Anything else important for mitochondrial function? Two type of dietary approaches that have been proven to be favorable to mitochondria are intermittent fasting, which in which you see, without getting into biochemistry, an increase in the ability to perform and the performance level of mitochondria, up to 20% sometimes in certain studies. And the other one is ketogenic diets. Ketogenic diets where you will consume, say, 70, 80% of your calories in fat, have been shown to increase ATP production up to 50%. Wow. That is a wow. Ketogenic means that you ran out of carbohydrates and now you're burning fat in order to survive. You know, doing that also diminishes, seems to be diminishing the reactive oxygen species, the free radical damage. So these are two things to keep in mind. If we look at aerobic exercise, that is able to increase mitochondrial performance between, in certain studies, between 20 and 50%. That's incredible. And also, resistance training has to do with fusion. So there is this, you know, without getting into the alphabet soup of biochemistry, there are certain pathways that um, increase mitochondrial fusion, which seems to be kind of, uh, when they get together, they, will, they function better. And that's what you get out of resistance training, meaning increasing your muscle mass type of exercise. So to be able to have both in your life, both aerobic exercise endurance and muscle mass resistance is very beneficial to mitochondria. I know that we always put diet first and, and forefront. Are there certain things that you would add to the diet, nutrient supplementation, when trying to maximize mitochondrial function? Yes, and go with me a second. Humor me with a little biochemistry here. Sure. Dr. Hans Krebs, um, from born in 1900, died in 1981, is the genius who unraveled the inner function of the mitochondria. In other words, we said about ATP is the flame of life, and all, but how do you get to that? Nobody knew. And this incredible physician in, in 1937 um, published the first studies, you know, the first... Uh, documentation of how it happens. 
And it became known as the Crab Cycle because of his last name. This is actually, we used to joke and used to say that the Crab Cycle is, is you, how you get rid of people that want to be doctors. <laughs> so, but once you begin to understand what's happening, and it's about seven, eight reactions that one goes into each other, it's like a circle. So imagine a circle, right? And then you look at the parts of the circle, and what do you see? You see the nutraceuticals that are famous. So, for instance, B vitamins. I mean, even before that, coenzyme Q10. Coenzyme Q10 is worldwide known. For what? A heart? Why? Because that's the most metabolically active uh, organ in the body. So is the brain, so is the kidney, so is the liver. So why CoQ10? Because it's the last piece you need to make ATP. Mm -hmm. If you take out the CoQ10, you sabotage the ATP machine, and that's a big problem, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at the cofactors that go from one reaction to the other in the Krebs cycle to arrive at the construction of ATP, it's all the B vitamin group. B1, B2, B9, the folate, and all that, they're all there. So when you take B vitamins, you are helping your Krebs cycle, which means you're helping your mitochondria, which means you're actually creating energy true energy, not endocrinological energy or psychological energy, true biochemical structure of energy, right? So that's that. Uh, and then, you know, like uh, NMN, uh, NAC, lipoic acid, glutathione is a little different because it's a combination of all those. These are all have become famous because among the things they do, they help the correct function of the Krebs cycle, which now you understand, the more that functions correctly, the more ATP you make, the more your mitochondria are functioning right, and the happier you are. Well, Dr. Pazan, you really helped us to interweave a lot of important concepts that go behind understanding mitochondria, what they are and what they do. I always learn something when I talk to you. Thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Hope to see you soon. Thank you.